What's that, Globy? What am I doing? Well, I'm looking into the night sky. Oh, what's with the white beard? Well, I'm doing my impersonation of Galileo. Galileo was an Italian physicist, mathematician, and astronomer who studied the stars more than 400 years ago. People today refer to Galileo as the father of modern science and the father of modern observational astronomy. Galileo made major improvements to the telescope, which today continues to help us see the stars and planets in space. In fact, using one of his early models of the telescope, Galileo was able to discover four of the largest moons of Jupiter, which are called Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. He was also the first to say our moon's surface is not smooth. It's rough and uneven, covered with craters and mountains. Like Galileo, today's astronomers continue to look into space, hoping to make new discoveries about our universe. But today's telescopes are much more powerful than the ones Galileo used. The large telescopes our astronomers use can be found at observatories around the world. But they can also be found in space, such as the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble is a giant telescope that orbits Earth and sends back amazing pictures of our universe. Today we're going to talk about a special Earth-based observatory in Puerto Rico. It's called the Arecibo Observatory. It's called that because it's located near the town of Arecibo in Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory. Puerto Rico is in the Caribbean, and it's also an island. The telescope at the Arecibo Observatory is enormous. It measures 305 meters in diameter. That's about 1,000 feet, which is even longer than three football fields. A diameter is a line segment that goes from one point on a circle through the center to another point on the circle. People use this measurement to describe how large a circle is. But the Arecibo telescope isn't like some of the other telescopes we've talked about. You know, there are many different types of telescopes, and only some of them are optical scopes, like the one used by Galileo. The Arecibo telescope is a radio telescope, which means it sees the radio waves given off by large objects like planets. A large dish on the Arecibo telescope focuses these waves so the radio data can be collected. Computers then turn the data into images or pictures. Radio waves are not nearly as affected by Earth's atmosphere as optical telescopes, so it's not necessary to build a radio telescope on a high mountain. In fact, the Arecibo telescope was built inside a giant natural valley. The largest curved telescope dish in the world makes it the most sensitive radio telescope on Earth. Well, a radio wave is a wave, just like you think about waves on the ocean, right? A wave goes up, and then it goes down, and then it goes up, and then it goes down. Well, a radio wave isn't in water. It's actually a kind of light. So it's light, just like we think of light from the sun or light from a lamp that we would turn on. Those also are waves. But in this case, it's a radio wave. Radio waves are much longer and lower in energy than visible light. Now, a radio wave can travel through space just like light waves can travel through space because radio is light. And that's the advantage of a radio telescope. That wave can travel through space, but then when it gets to the Earth, it can make it all the way down through our atmosphere. The atmosphere of the Earth actually blocks a lot of different kinds of light that come to us from space. But there is what we call a window of transmission at radio frequencies. So radio waves can come from space and make it all the way down to the ground where we can detect them. Astronomers carefully chose the location of the Arecibo telescope. Puerto Rico is near the equator. The equator is an imaginary line that runs around the center of Earth. You may have noticed that objects in the sky, like the stars or the moon, appear in different locations at different times of the night. This happens because Earth is actually rotating on its axis as it revolves around the sun. It would be impossible to move a telescope as big as the one at Arecibo to follow these objects. So placing the telescope near the equator lets astronomers observe planets and other objects in space for the longest period of time. A telescope that's really, really big is really, really hard to move. So rather than make a moving telescope, the Arecibo telescope is fixed. It doesn't move. It sits in the ground and we can't reposition it. So that means the telescope can only look at whatever passes right over it. Well, if you want to be able to look at planets and you can only see what's passing straight overhead, you need to be close to the equator because near the Earth's equator, planets pass directly overhead. Astronomers have learned many things from using this giant telescope. 
For example, astronomers used to believe it took Mercury 88 days to make one complete rotation on its axis. Every 24 hours marks one day on Earth. That's the time it takes Earth to make one complete rotation on its imaginary axis. When scientists began studying Mercury's radio signals in 1965, they discovered that one day on Mercury is only 59 Earth days long. That's really slow compared to Earth, but much faster than astronomers first thought. But it's not just planets that interest scientists at Arecibo. Much about what we know about the upper layers of our atmosphere has been learned from the research done in Puerto Rico. And here's something really cool. The Arecibo Telescope is part of the SETI program, which stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. The SETI program is a scientific program designed to look to see if there are any other living beings out in space somewhere. They actually found pulsars and thought that those pulsars might be signals from alien civilizations. It turned out they were just stars. But in 1974, when the Arecibo telescope was recommissioned after an upgrade, they decided to do what's called an active SETI test. And they sent a message out into space to a star cluster that's about 25,000 light years away. That means it will take the message 25,000 years to get there. And if anybody's there to answer it, it'll take their answer 25,000 years to come back. So searching for life out in space is not easy. <laughs> wow, Globy, could you imagine how incredible it would be if one of our telescopes actually discovered life outside Earth? After all, our astronomers, with the help of Arecibo and Hubble telescopes, as well as other observatories on Earth, are discovering new planets in our solar system and beyond. What else will they discover in the next 10, 20, 30, or 400 years? It'll certainly be exciting. So, Globy, what do you think? Should I uh, keep the beard? <laughs> <laughs>